So let me give you a summary of all the videos so far. Um, if, if you are standing on top of the building and you drop a cannonball, the, the actual distance traveled would, would look like this. So this is t, uh, uh, t equals zero. This is t equals one. So one second after, uh, two seconds after here, uh, and so on. It, it will look like this. And because you're on Earth, the, uh, the acceleration here or the gravity is, is 10. Okay, on, on Earth, well, it's actually 9.8, but we, uh, we round off to 10. So, so you can think of this as, the ca you can think of it as a cannonball having an acceleration of 10, uh, meters per second squared. It's accelerating downwards. And, uh, this is similar to, to you and your dad sitting in a car. Um, if you, if your dad puts his foot on the accelerator, and let, let's say he accelerates at, at 10, um, 10 meters per second squared, um, the, the actual distance will, will look something like this. So this is, this would be, uh, t, um, t equals, um, how, t equals zero. This here will be, uh, t equals two. Uh, and this here will be, will be, uh, three seconds after. And because, because there's an acceleration, the distance increases each, each time. Because look at, look at this here. The distance here, uh, well, a second after, the, the distance, you will cover more distance because, because there's an acceleration. If there's an acceleration, there's an increase in speed. Now, if there's an increase in speed, there's going to be an increase in distance covered. So, so the actual, um, so your dad accelerating at 10 meters per second squared is the same as this cannonball accelerating 10 meters squared. So, so you, hang on, let, 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 let me show you this there. Okay, let, let me just clear everything. Um, let me just clear everything. Okay, so lo lo looking at your dad's car here. Okay, so if, if I, if, hang on, I, I, I want to show you something. Uh, hang on. Uh, mind. So if, if I rotate it here like this, your, remember your dad, your dad is accelerating 10 meters per second squared. So that's the, that's pretty much similar to, um, hang on. To, uh, to the cannonball being dropped. Hang on. So, so look, look at this here. Um, what, I, what I'm trying to say is that, uh, it, it's, it's similar, you see. Uh, because your dad's accelerating at, um, 10 meters per second squared. Um, so, so this here is, uh, t equals zero. So this here is, uh, t equals zero. And then one second later, it's right here. There are equal, two seconds, three seconds, Four seconds, five seconds, and so on. So what what I'm trying to say is that when um when when you drop a cannonball, the cannonball has an acceleration of ten meters per second squared. That's that's pretty much similar to um hang on that's pretty much similar to um to your dad accelerating, but it hit up here is it's a vertical acceleration downwards. Um, here it's an, a horizontal. Well, well, the distance covered would be, would be pretty much the same. They're, they're both, there's an, ex they both have an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared. So, well, anyway, the, 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 um, acceleration time graph, uh, would look something like this. Okay. This here would be 10 because, because up here there's an acceleration of 10. Uh, here there's also an acceleration of 10, but, but in this direction. Okay, so, so your acceleration graph will look like this. Uh, the, the distance time graph will look like this, a straight line. Um, you can think of it as y equals mx plus c. But the uh, m here is either g, which is the gravity, or you, or you can think of it as in, in the case of a car, uh, the acceleration is, is 10. So, so in both cases here, uh, is 10 here and it's also 10. So, so, so in both cases, the, um, the, the, ex the speed time graph will look the same in, in, in both cases. So it, it would be, it would be, um, it would be S equals 10 T. Okay. C here is zero. And, um, and in both cases, the, the distance time graph will look something like this. It would be a quadratic. Okay. So, so you can think of, oh, you know, up here, when you're up here, the, um, the formula is h equals g t squared over 2. Um, th this, this is a free fall, um, well, well, you can work out the distance traveled, uh, after 
x amount of seconds or t amount of seconds. So you, you would use this formula here. Well, down here, you can actually recycle this formula here. You can actually recycle this formula here. So if, if you want to, um, if you want to work out how, how far this car has traveled, um, well, well, g, g in this case is, is, well, you can use this similar to this. Hang on. Uh, earlier it was g t squared over 2. Well, you, you can use as a, well, changes to a, it's no longer the height. Maybe d, change it to d. And then g is no longer g, it's, uh, it's an acceleration. So let's, let's, let's call it a. And then, uh, t squared over 2. Or maybe you can replace this a with a 10. Because in this case, the acceleration is 10. So you can say d equals, uh, 10 t squared over 2. Okay. So, so basically this, this graph here will look something like this. Y equals, uh, 10, uh, t squared over 2. Okay. Um, it's very, it's very much similar to this. G t squared over 2. In, in both cases, this g here, because this g normally represents gravity, but we, well, the acceleration, g here also represents acceleration, so you can put 10 in here. Okay, but but anyway, the, the graph here will look will look uh, like something like this. Okay, so um, this this here is the most important graph here because from the speed time graph, if you if you work out the acceleration, uh, sorry, if you work out the gradient of this thing, it represents the 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 uh, the, uh, the acceleration because here this is the gradient. Remember, this is the gradient. Okay, and um, and if if you work out the area of this thing, it represents the the distance traveled. But here's the thing. Hang on, let me clear this up. Here's the thing. If if you're given a um, a uh, a distance time graph, um, the gradient of this line here represents the speed. I I know this is. Hang on. Let let, let me just let me just redraw this. So re remember the gradient of this represents the acceleration. Now, the gradient of a distance time graph represents the speed. I know. So, so here, um, in order for you to find out the gradient of this, uh, this line here, you, at the moment, you don't have the knowledge of, um, finding out the gradient of this. Hang on. Uh, what was it? Um, uh, uh, 10, uh, Let's use x, 10x. Uh, at the moment, you don't have the knowledge to um, to find out the the gradient of of at, at this point here. Here, it's easy to find out the gradient at this point because it's y equals m x plus c. So so you would just somehow find out the m, okay? But here, um, here, let, let, let's say let, let's say uh, we we change this to let's say I don't know a acceleration. Uh, um, well. Well, at the moment that you, you don't have the knowledge to find out the, the gradient of, of a curve. Okay. So, so what, well, what, when you're older, you would do what's called calculus and calculus allows you to find out the gradient of a curve, um, precise gradient of the curve. But at the moment, you, 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 you don't have the knowledge to do that. So, so what you have to do, well, when you are given a, um, a, a distance time graph, you have to find out, if you want to find out the gradient of this distance time graph, you will have to do what's called a, you have, you have to draw a, a, a what's called a, ta a tangent. Hang on, a tangent is, um, well, it depends a lot on guesswork here because you have to draw a line where it just touches the curve and then, and then find out, um, find out the gradient of this line here. Okay, so, so it, it does depend a lot on, on, uh, on guesswork, but when you're older, you can use calculus and find out the precise gradient. But um, at the moment, it's, it's guesswork. So hang on. So if, if you're given a, uh, a a curve like this, and you want to find out the speed at this point here, at this time, at this time here, okay. So here you have to draw. You have to do a lot of guesswork here. You have to draw a straight line that just touches this thing here, and then you would you would you would have to uh, work out the the height here. And then work out the, the cross here and get the height divided by the cross. And again, because you're, because you don't know calculus, you, you just have to guess. Um, so here, if you want to find out the, uh, because we're given the speed time, the, uh, graph, if you want to find out the speed, 
at this point here. You you want to uh, you you need to find out the gradient of this line here. So here you have to draw a tangent. So so a tangent. Well, it it it, it depends on the guesswork. It requires a lot on the guesswork here. So um so let let, let me just clarify this. Hang on. So given the given the given the speed time graph like this, the gradient of this of the, the speed time graph represents the acceleration okay and uh, and the gradient of this this curve here the gradient here represents the speed okay um, yeah just just accept just so the, the only new thing that that I'm teaching you in this video is is that the the gradient of this time uh, of this distance time graph represents the uh, the speed okay